This talk is going to be Beam Up Talent, the long road from incubator project to cloud-based pipeline designer tool. Um, our speaker is Alexei Romanenko. He's a principal engineer at Talent, and he's been part of the Beam community for uh, six years, I think. So he's a Beam TMC member and, and a committer, of course. Um, so you know, he, he knows the Beam community very well, so you, you can also ask him about that. Um, Good morning, everybody. Uh, I work for Talent as an um, open source engineer. And uh, so today I'm going to do a talk, maybe less technical than usually, but uh, also quite inter interesting about the history of using the open source project as a BIM in the company. Okay, so move on. Uh, before, probably who doesn't know <laughs> too much about our company, a brief history moment. Uh, so Talent was founded in the 2000s. Um, Six uh, is the first company actually for open source, uh, the bring to open source market data integration software. So uh, then we released our two products. Mostly it uh, was a Talent Open Studio, it's open source product, and there is a, it's a private version. It's called the Data um, Integration. Uh, then in 2015, uh, of course, people wanted to, to run their um, data processing tool on the cloud. So we released the talent integration tool for that. And uh, in 2016, with uh, other companies, we started to work and finally uh, help uh, to promote Apache Beam. At, at the time, it was an incubator project to become a top-level Apache software foundation project. Uh, Boom, boom, boom. 2018, we released our cloud tool, uh, mostly for a AWS, based on Beam. It's called the Data Streams. And then the next uh, generation of this tool, called that um, Pipeline Designer. So uh, to run on our Talent Cloud. And the latest news, actually, finally, uh, just uh, in May, uh, our company was acquired by other company, Click. So currently, we are Click Talent Company. But we still keep our brands uh, for products uh, separately. Talent also has a very long history uh, about open source. So it's our culture just from the beginning. Uh, we are a long time partner with the uh, Ap Apache Software Foundation. Uh, we actually, our team, open source team, uh, helped uh, to different ASF projects to pass through incubator and become a, and be, uh, become a top level project. Uh, we also actually c contribute, of course, to various uh, open source and ASF projects. You can name it, starting from uh, Apache CXF, Camel, MQ, Beam, of course, Spark, Flynn, and so on. And uh, we are a member of uh, other open source software foundations. So you can see that open source is very important for us. OK, uh, so now uh, quickly about what actually, uh, how we do use Beam at Talent. <laughs> so, uh, I put this picture, <laughs> well, just because it's beautiful. And also, <laughs> yeah. I wish that it will be like a straight forward road, <laughs> but uh, this is us usually used, uh, as you can see in the beginning when you start to use uh, any open source project especially if you see it, it fits very well for your purposes. But in the end, you find that sometimes um, you have some maybe needs or requirements that doesn't fit well, and you need uh, somehow to adapt either this project, either your product for that. So we, with Beam, we, it was not an exception. So uh, that is why actually uh, I decided to do this talk and uh, to give you the basic uh, idea how we did use Beam uh, during this last uh, six years, actually, almost seven. Uh, and uh, just give some ex examples about uh, this kind of situations that probably we faced with uh, related to some, mm, I would say, challenges with Beam. But again, our uh, top product initially was uh, just a desktop application. So it's an Eclipse-based tool. Uh, to create uh, data processing um, jobs and uh, r r just 
it's easy, it's quite easy to, to create with a drag and drop components. You you connect connect components together and then just run it as an ETL or ELT job. And uh, the advantage of this uh, user doesn't need to write any type of code for that. So as a logical actually evolution of this product was uh, to create a, a web based uh, application that would be possible to again to create data processing pipelines you can see it's very similar how we do with beam so we usually have an input output some processors we call processors so it's a company that process your data you can again easily with a drag and drop in your web browser to create th th these pipelines configure your processors uh, with a menu on, on the right side. And uh, what is uh, very also important, and I think it's very useful, see the results of your processor just almost instantly in a live preview. So it's, it should be very convenient for user. Of course, it's, uh, it supports batch and streaming. Uh, it's uh, portable and scalable. And uh, again, it's uh, just from the beginning, it uses Beam uh, under the hood. As, a, uh, as a one of the components of this tool. We use Beam not only for this tool. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, during the time when we started to use Beam since uh, 2016, uh, we also started to use it in uh, other products. Actually, we have a, it's called a data processing platform that unites uh, different type of products. And uh, in three of them, we use Beam. For example, in Pipeline Designer, we do it for batch and streaming processes. Uh, for data inventory, actually, we on the right side, you can see it's uh, we use it uh, for sampling. Sampling is like when you upload your, your data set, you want to actually understand what your data is there. So in this case, uh, with uh, this tool, you can just briefly investigate and see um, the what kind of data actually you have in this data set. And the data preparation tool, again, before running your full pipeline, sometimes you want somehow to do some pre-processing jobs against your data. So this tool actually uh, helps you with this. And uh, all these three tools actually somehow use Beam under the hood. And what unite all of them is a, we call it engine runtime, so engine. It's just a DAG with uh, IO components and uh, uh, other components as we call it processors. So these components actually could be based either on Beam API, either on other um, TCK came, uh, API. TCK is our internal framework. Uh, it's it's uh, partly open source, I think. And um, why we use it? Because we also wanted to integrate it with uh, some other product in our company. And this actually framework help us with this. And of course, uh, another component, we call it compiler. Uh, maybe it should rather be called a translator because uh, why? Now uh, I, um, I will try to explain. Actually, uh, all your pipeline is represented as a runtime flow object. So it's a, a JSON actually that uh, will send you, uh, send to uh, a compiler. Uh, well, which which compiler to use? It's a good question. It depends actually on type of your pipeline. Uh, we support different types of co compilers or translators. And actually, Beam compiler one was uh, was was uh, one of the first compiler that we started to use. And finally, this Beam compiler will uh, translate this job into Beam pipeline and run it uh, on a different runners. We currently support three runners: um, Spark runner, Flink runner, and Direct runner. So this is, again, just example of uh, architecture, how, do we how we run a, we call it full run pipeline with Beam and Spark. Uh, full run pi pipeline, it means like we use all data and uh, we run it just uh, on a cluster. So uh, there are actually three main components. The first component, again, for example, if it's pipeline uh, designer, in, we have a web UI where a user can create uh, uh, their pipelines with just uh, the drag and drop components. Then this pipeline will be uh, translated into JSON and sent by REST to Apache Levy. In this case, Apache Levy is used as a server to dispatch actually a job finally to, uh, to the cluster. 
uh, it, actually it's mostly Spark oriented, and but we did a lot of changes for that uh, to support other uh, platforms and that. And uh, currently we are thinking to move from uh, Apache Live actually. But uh, anyway, so Beach, uh, Beam compiler will translate the job into Beam into Beam job finally, and then run uh, uh, with a Spark runner. All artifacts actually are sitting on Apache Live, so it's, you just need to run your Spark uh, submit and run it on a, on, on a Spark cluster. So, and yeah, currently actually in this case we support on only Java SDK. Uh, so, this is a few words about how we use Beam. And now I wanted to give you a couple of examples of our maybe quite specific use cases. But again, I think it shows that uh, sometimes you have some challenges using an open source project. Uh, the first use case is a, we call it a Python processor. One of the, we have a bunch of different processors, uh, but in one of them is a Python component. So in this case, for users who wants to write some code or they have some specific needs to process the, the data as a Python component, they can, uh, you can see on the right side, they, they can actually enter the Python code for these components. And uh, again, instantly to, to see the preview of the results. In this case, we will just uh, uppercase uh, the column with the name of the, of the football player. player. Uh, so, what's the problem? Uh, problem was, uh, ah, I forgot, sorry, I forgot to say that actually initially this component was based on a Python 2 version and it was uh, originally developed with the help of Jiton because all our pipelines actually in the, back in the days were in a Jiton, uh, with a Java SDK and uh, Jiton is a good, was a mm, good trade-off to support Python in Java. The problem was that uh, end of life of Python 2.7 was uh, in the end of 2019. So Jayton did not support actually Python 3. I think it still doesn't support. I'm not sure actually if anyone is working on this. Uh, so and uh, additionally, it was not so easy to add the support of third party libraries uh, with Jayton. So we had two options actually to use a Back in the days, Beam portability became a, a feature that uh, was possible to use in Beam, and to use the Python 3 as a, as a mm, transform in the cross-language pipeline. Uh, actually, I already gave a, a detailed talk about that, uh, how, about how we did that, uh, what kind of experiments we did, and so on. And another option was uh, to use a Python as a service. So, well, again, pretty simple solution, just to run your Python server and then uh, talk to the server from your Beam pipeline. Okay, with the cross-language pipeline, the main architecture become a little bit more complicated. So uh, additionally to what we already have, we should add expansion service, we should add a job server, we should add a, and we should use a, should use a portable runner. Uh, we did a bunch of, again, as I said, a bunch of experiments on this, uh, especially benchmarking. So benchmarking was uh, showed actually good results for large amount of data, but for small data sets, uh, it was uh, several times worse that we uh, had actually with JTON before. So, of course, this approach has the advantages. Um, and so, it's by default it supports all, all Beam model. Uh, it's already tested with the Beam community and supported by Beam community. Uh, as I mentioned, it has a, a pretty good performance on, on, a, on, a, large on a large data set. But in the same time, it has their drawbacks as well. Uh, well, several times worse performance for small data. Uh, for us, it requires pretty complicated changes in our internal architecture. Uh, and also, and so in following this, it will require a little bit more higher maintenance cost in the future for us. Uh, another approach was a to um, create and finally run Python as a service. So we decided to create a Python server. Well, brief, uh, in 
simple in, in a uh, in a simplified way uh, we created a sp specific Python transform that actually will uh, start this service or, or this ser server already can be started uh, in advance then uh, you needed to in setup you needed to require uh, to register all your user defined functions in Python that uh, probably will be used uh, to process your data also all your third party libraries also should be installed there and then just when you process your elements you just send your elements to this uh, server then it will be processed by python in a way uh, like uh, user wants and then you will have uh, back your results of course you don't need it to do it uh, record by record so it could be batched and uh, to for better performance uh, for us it was much simpler and more configurable actually approach to do this uh, it does not require no additional uh, additional dependencies that probably will brings with the beam portability and uh, it was a much better performance for small amount of data why we care about small data sets this is actually a uh, topic for the next use case that I will show you in a minute uh, well, disadvantages of this, of course, uh, it's very specific case, and uh, this uh, Python server by default does not support any Beam mm, model because actually it does not use a Beam uh, SDK. It just uh, it's just a Beam server. Oh, uh, sorry, it's, it's just a Python server. So in the same time, so uh, to run it in production, it requires some robust implementation of, of the server. And uh, you should also make sure that everything works fine, uh, reliable in this way. And of course, it's not tested with the Beam community. So uh, as uh, I said before, we cared a little bit more about actually um, uh, small data. So in this case, we just uh, choose this approach. And uh, now actually how it works in production for now. Small data performance. Uh, why? Why? Uh, okay. Uh, usually, our pipeline is running against three type of data sets. We call it small data set, average data set, small data set is tens of uh, uh, of records, or maybe hundreds of records. Average data sets, it's uh, tens of thousands of records, and of course, and of course, large data sets is tens or hundreds of millions and more. So. And we want to run the same pipeline, in case of Beam, the same Beam pipeline against these uh, three type of data, data sets. But by default, actually, Beam was developed in a way to run it uh, against big data or large data sets and in uh, distributed environments. Uh, because, again, for small data sets, you don't need a distributed environments. You want to have everything in memory and to run it locally and as fast as possible. Uh, so, it means that in this case, all additional costs to run your beam pipeline, uh, beam pipeline will play pretty significant role, actually, and uh, you should do something with this. There are three approaches that we uh, took. W one of the options was uh, actually we tested with different runners, and surprisingly, that performance again for small data sets was different depending on a, on a runner uh, I think for us it was we choose the flink runner in the local mode so it was the fastest runner to run again uh, with the low overhead to run a beam pipeline also two other options was uh, to use a native Java code and uh, to create a brand new fast in memory local runner for that well, with the first approach, it uh, was kind of obvious. We just tested with different runners, and now it runs uh, as a in production. But we also actually work on uh, two other options currently, so uh, it's a work in progress. The first one also pretty interesting, so also maybe for Beam community. So the idea was uh, to run a Beam pipeline, uh, Beam pipeline, uh, locally as a Graal VM native image. So in this case, we wanted to create uh, native image 
for Beam and run it as a native process in this case. Uh, for this case, uh, we use the direct runner just to simplify experiments because uh, for, with other runners, Spark of Link, uh, it was a little bit more complicated, but it's in our, on, on our to-do list how to do that. And uh, we, of course, we ex expected a lower footprint for memory and a faster startup, uh, startup um, times. After we did that, actually, we faced with a bunch of different challenges, how just how to create uh, a native image uh, with Beam. Uh, my colleague Moritz Mack actually explained it very well in his uh, blog post. So for those who are interested in this, I would, I would recommend you to take a look on this. Uh, but finally, the good news is that we managed to do that. We, we managed to run this. And uh, as expected, we have a better memory usage and performance usage as well, but maybe not as uh, better as it was expected before. Uh, so we continued our experiments, uh, but at the same time, we don't give up. We want to test it with the other runners as well. In our case, it's a Spark Runner and Flink Runner. And probably this also could be interesting for community because I think uh, running Beam as a native image, it's pretty cool feature. So as the option was to develop a new runner. Uh, so this is a, we already know that for Java SDK, we already have a direct runner, uh, but originally it was just created for testing. So it's local runner, but it was not supposed to run in, in production. Uh, but again, we wanted to have a local runner, a very simple runner, but in the same time, uh, very fast and uh, to use memory efficiently. Uh, but in the same time to be able to run a beam, uh, beam pipelines as well. So uh, we decided to create such a runner based on a, it's called a reactive streams specification and just uh, more specifically using a project reactor. Uh, if you are a Java developer and don't know maybe about uh, this project, I would highly recommend you to take a look. It's very interesting because uh, it allows to write asynchronic Java code in a very simple way and it's very effective. So this runner was creative. Of course, we, don't, we didn't want in the beginning just to, uh, in sake of POC, we didn't want to support everything. Uh, like, uh, so it currently supports only batch only mode, no additional feature like a state termers, and, and it works only in, in global windows. So in the same time, it uses one GVM. It's very, keep all data in memory. Uh, uh, it's implemented in a separate branch. Uh, you, you can take a look uh, in more its uh, um, re repository on this. We have some plans once it will be uh, ready, for example, to some way to be present to community. Finally, I hope we'll be managed to contribute it back to Beam if uh, there is a, a, in, interested about that. Uh, of course, we tested it there for performance um, and uh, we run a TPCDS uh, benchmark over this uh, with this runner. As you can see uh, on the graph, we had much better performance. So it's a green line uh, on the bottom. Uh, for almost all uh, tested uh, tests, we had much better, several times actually better performance and, and memory usage with this runner. So in, we think that actually it brings pretty significant performance improvements. Uh, so we, are, we think and we are actually going to work next and uh, first of course to add a windowing, beam windowing support, finally then finally run a uh, run validates runner test and probably then uh, to present it back to Beam. Uh, so this is actually uh, shows that these two examples that uh, sometimes you can face some challenges that it was not in the beginning possible to overcome and probably you needed to find uh, some solutions but again to find actually the trade-off between what your open source project gives you by default and what probably you need uh, in our company or uh, we of course we contributed to beam Mm, quite a lot. Uh, our main contributions initially was about uh, around actually Java I.O. connectors because we use a lot of different connectors uh, for our use cases. We did a bunch of improvements for Nextmark, Nextmark benchmarks, TPCDS benchmarks and uh, 
since we have a user spark runner uh, we support currently actually two type uh, two uh, types of spark runner based on rdd api and uh, and the data set api uh, at the same time all other contributions that we did uh, so we just do release testing actively do pr reviews especially related to the parts where we are interested in uh, beam user supports and we do talk and talks and blogging um, from time to time about what's uh, about beam in general and some are, again some are our specific use cases so some actually takes away from um, after using uh, quite a long time open source project as a, one of the key components in uh, in our product the first was of course was like a so we believe that it's uh, very important to contribute back to the project that actually you use mm. uh, it, it gives you uh, it gives you actually the understanding how project works you always aware of what's happening in the project some trends uh, and again if you use your project so you just needed to share your work with other people so this is how open source wo uh, works Knowledge sharing also very important because people sometimes leaving, people change projects, so it's very important to share your knowledge, uh, at least uh, inside your company. Uh, and you, for example, as an open source developer, you want to share this knowledge with uh, other teams because probably they don't just have a time to be up to date what's happening in open source projects. So it's up, uh, at least in our company, it's up to us to, to present some new cool features, what's happening in, in uh, open source projects, and BIM in particular. Uh, drive the project by be part of a community. It's very important. Uh, as I, I showed before, it's quite challenging sometimes to find a trade-off between what you need and what actually the users for these projects probably need because sometimes it can be very specific so I don't have an answer how to um, better to do with this but uh, it's just a challenge and okay finally uh, don't wait that someone will do your job <laughs> or implement your feature just do it yourself and in the end okay I'm running out, uh, out of time just wanted to thank uh, all uh, time talents beam contributors some of them already left project some of them maybe not so active some of them still on the project but again many thanks i think uh, they did this project better uh, and that's it and thank you thank you for attention uh,